So far in the Science of Alloderm video series, we've talked about why regeneration is important in surgical wound healing and how the processing of an acellular dermal matrix or ADM can affect the body's response. We saw that alloderm is processed in a way that allows positive recognition and supports regeneration. And we saw some of the ways other ADMs can be damaged during processing. Now let's look at what this damage can mean in vivo. Alloderm regenerative tissue matrix is intended to be used for repair or replacement of damaged or inadequate integumental tissue or for other homologous uses of human integument. As we discussed in the first video, scarring is a suboptimal pathway of wound healing for a variety of structural, functional, and cosmetic reasons. An ADM that's positively recognized by the body will elicit a reduced inflammatory response and support repair by regeneration, not scarring. Here are some of the ways we test ADMs on the bench top and in animal models. In vitro, we culture a population of white blood cells called monocytes and then introduced an ADM. Then we run an immunoassay, looking for inflammatory biomarkers such as the cytokines listed here. To study the body's reaction to different ADMs, we implant them into an animal model and run clinical laboratory analyses to see whether an inflammatory response has been mounted to a particular implanted material. For example, elevated IgG specific to the implanted ADM indicates that there is an active systemic immune response to the ADM. Following explantation, we can see if there's a localized inflammatory response by looking at the histology of the implant and surrounding host tissue, staining for specific inflammatory cell markers, and conducting immunoassays, looking for the same biomarkers as in our in vitro test. In this study by Orenstein and colleagues, several ADMs were applied to a human monocyte culture and incubated for a period of seven days. The researchers were looking for activation of monocytes to macrophages, which then release inflammatory cytokines. When these cultures were assayed, the levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines were significantly higher with Alamax and Flex HD, in the green and gray bars respectively, compared with alloderm, which is represented by the orange bars. Here are the results of the systemic antibody blood tests we just talked about. In two separate studies that followed the same protocol, we implanted FlexHD and Alloderm into animal models. Then we collected blood samples from each subject at several time points. As you can see from this graph, overall, the animals implanted with FlexHD had a higher IgG titer, showing a greater inflammatory response compared with Alloderm, which had a minimal to moderate IgG titer. Next, here is a histological comparison of various ADMs after one month implantation in five different animal studies. These images reveal a spectrum of host responses. The ADMs that were stored in alcohol, subjected to high dose irradiation, or processed with damaging reagents show evidence of an excessive inflammatory host response. Note the hypercellular mixed inflammatory infiltrate, as well as the presence of numerous foreign body giant cells. The host response to Alloderm RTM, thanks to its gentle solubilization processing techniques and efficient lower dose sterilization, was marked by minimal inflammation, infiltration by host fibroblasts, and evident vascularization, the hallmarks of regeneration. So what might all this mean to the patient? When an implanted material elicits excessive inflammation, the results can include a lack of mesh integration, as well as scar and capsule formation, and could even lead to seroma, infection, and pain. To recap, ADMs that are processed in a way that damages the matrix can prompt an extended inflammatory response in the patient, which may manifest in a variety of clinical sequela, including scarring, infection, and pain. As we've seen in earlier videos, Alloderm RTM is processed in a way that does not damage the matrix, supporting positive recognition and regeneration. If you haven't watched the other videos in the Science of Alloderm series, I encourage you to do so. And keep an eye on our YouTube channel for new videos coming out in the future. Of course, you can always speak with your Alloderm sales representative or go to Alloderm.com for more information.